So this girl went missing on the 4th of September 2024 and soon afterwards her family got a phone call from a kidnapper demanding the sum of 400,000 naira, which they paid. Now, 20-year-old Abigail Damilola was said to be a 100-level student of the Federal University of Lokoja in Kogi State and not much is known from her except that she's in 100 level, pretty much a fresh student. And I think this is where maybe her carelessness may have resulted from because how the hell do you just receive an invite from a total stranger to follow him into an uncompleted building? Somehow I'm predicting that this year ending is going to see a high rate of money ritual killing, some of which may not even come to light, some of which may not make the news. But it seems like it's bound to happen because there's a generation of young boys and young girls coming into the real life into the society of freedom where their family can no longer monitor them and i think these are the people that will be the most targeted this is your your mother and your father still living together and this is married how old are you? I'm 24. Okay, tell us what happened. The day I met them, I told her at night. She, she went to charge her phone. She also went to charge my phone. So I paid for her phone charger. So when we got to know each other, she told me that she had this understanding with her boyfriend, which I told her that she should settle down. She told me her age. She said she was 16. So I told her that me, I don't want anything to do with any small girl like me because they are 16 and, and older than me. So we thought she requested for um, exotic and um, foul biscuits, which I declared because um, like, I used to do hand work, not yard work. So along the line, we stay in the same compound because I'm a tenant. Since she's in under level, she just came fresh from secondary school. So after her kidnapper requested the 400,000 Naira, her family paid, hoping to see her alive, but they did not get to. The greediness of the kidnapper was what led to his arrest because he then demanded the sum of 10 million Naira in addition to the 400,000 Naira they paid. I guess in his mind, if they could pay the 400,000 Naira, then they could pay the 10 million Naira. And clearly this wasn't even a kidnap because we've said it before, a kidnapper would not go through the stress of kidnapping somebody uh, somebody only to demand 400,000 naira or even 1 million naira. But this guy pretty much figured that he could make more money from this situation. However, on his way to receive the 10 million naira, that was when the police caught up with him because the family of the girl had spoken to the police and so they trailed the receiver of the ransom of 10 million naira to a young man named Jeremiah Paul. Apparently, Jeremiah Paul also happens to be a 20-year-old student of the same school. Some sources said he was a Kaduna boy who had come to Kogi State to work, and other sources claimed he was also a student of the same school, which I would assume might have been the case. Or maybe he posed to be a student of the same school because, you know, as a federal university, there are so many students. So maybe that was one of his ways to lure the girl. Because according to him, when he was caught, he confessed that he met Damilola uh, near an NPC fuel station, Lokoja, and they exchanged phone numbers and began chatting. And then he invited her to his house where he drugged her and they took her to an uncompleted building where he killed her. At the initial time, because I've already done this video, so this is us remaking it. He had confessed that he only killed her after she recognized him because his intention was to get ransom from her family. I told you now. Why did you kill her? And then he was then taken by the police to show them where he had kept the girl's body, which he took them to the back of a fire station in a bushy area where he dumped the girl's body. And upon reaching there, the police discovered that the girl's body had been mutilated and seriously harvested. All her organs were gone. Her private parts mutilated. It seemed like this girl was just butchered for the purpose of money ritual and that was the case but when um, jeremiah was confronted on the scene there he claimed he did not mutilate her body he did not cut her body parts for rituals this was his first claim in his first confession at the scene there that he only strangled her and threw her there giving the speculation that maybe another group of people came saw her body lying down there and decided to have first it but i don't know and that that was that would have been hard to imagine because what would lokoja be 
if that was the case you are walking and randomly you see a dead girl and instead of calling the police the people who see her starts to cut her body parts that is a creepy scenario and that was what Jeremiah was trying to make it seem as though. Well, what and what? What and what? Who's part of her? What and what did you remove from her body? Okay, why did you kill her? Why did you remove anything? But eventually, as it's been reported now, Jeremiah made more confessions. He claimed that he did not act alone because initially he claimed that he did it alone. That was his, that was part of his first statement that. He did it all by himself. He lured her, strangled her, and threw her there, and then got money from the family. You are a good one. No, this cannot be only you. This cannot be your work alone. I said to God. But as the case turned out to be, he didn't act alone. He had help. According to him, he met a native doctor who told him that these are the things he would need to you know make money and he admitted that from the moment he saw the Milola girl he was thinking money ritual which is so scary because when you look at it a young girl meets a young boy in her mind she has found the love of her life in the boy's mind he's going to be rich with her body parts it's such a creepy thing to think that that was the case maybe the Milola thought this was going to be a boyfriend I mean, she's an Andre level. Many of these new students always are very naive and very uh, easy to manipulate. So I'm assuming maybe she thought she has found a boyfriend. Huh. It's unfortunate for her. So in Jeremiah's new confession, he said that the native doctor that told him about the special parts of a human body he would need for money rituals resided in Ibadan. And when he had killed a girl or before so, the native doctor had sent a car all the way from Ibadan to Kogi State that contained the calabash and the knife and that was delivered to him he claimed that it was the knife he used to harvest the girl's body parts and put it in the calabash which i presume they wanted to use for soap making because we've seen this troop in modern day ritual killing mayhems they tend to want to use the body parts of their victims to make soap and i'm asking myself what are, what what do you mean by soap i guess these are the soap that people bathe with because we've seen it in multiple stories that we've talked about where Yahoo boys go to meet certain clerics or certain afar and they make the soap with the body parts of their victims. And when they use the soap to bathe, they're they are made to believe that the soap will grant them money or make them rich or something. So I guess this was kind of the case for Jeremiah and um, this Damilola. Parts of her body that were said to have been removed included her lungs, tongue, eyes, even have uh, private parts it's, it's shocking that this still goes on even up to this time that people still use other human beings to try to make money i don't know does this thing even work i, I don't know i doubt i don't think money ritual works as as much as we think it does i don't think so but many people believe it does and i guess it's that belief that is making a lot of people go into it more often jeremiah was the only one first arrested and now it's being said that Three other people have been arrested. I'm, ass I'm assuming the native doctor and other people who, maybe the driver and maybe somebody else who may have assisted him. You know, these things are usually a chain of supply from what we've seen so far. In my experience in talking about stories that has to do with money rituals, we tend to see that it's usually a chain. Somebody is requesting a body part. Somebody is looking for the victim. Somebody is killing the victim. Somebody is receiving the body part. Somebody is making the body part into soap somebody is rubbing and no not just just say rubbing somebody is purchasing the soap and somebody is using it that is usually the line of supply when it comes to body part we see it a lot in money ritual cases especially in ogun state that is what we've seen more most often and i think or in my mind i've said this before in a previous video all the police needs to do is find the chain all these ritual the native doctor that sent this boy knows other native doctors that are into this what stop you guys from questioning that native doctor to expose the rest usually they say yeah you need evidence but you know just monitor it trail them follow them the way we see them trail yahoo boys they can trail human parts dealers like that and find all of these people find all of them and lock them up and we might see a reduction in the rate of money ritual killings but given what is happening now it's just september 
October, November, December, there is going to be an increase because this is a period of time people are looking for money. And also, this will be a period of time where the holiday, everybody will be traveling and certain neighborhoods or areas will be deserted, which is giving more room for more crimes to be committed that nobody would see and report. Many people would disappear. There will be a high rate. We see this almost every year. And sometimes we don't even hear of it until the following year. That's when we start hearing all the things that happen in October, November, December. And it's going to be too much to keep up with because some of them, we may never hear of it. It's up to most people. And I'm going to urge a lot of our viewers, especially young girls and young boys too, because anyone could be victims. Share this with your sisters, with your young ones, those in school. Stay home. You know, during the holidays, it's not the perfect time to start meeting a new boyfriend. If you're in places like Ogun State, Ibadan, even in Lagos, if you gotta be careful who you suddenly meet because there will be a high rate of boyfriends using their girlfriends for rituals. It happens almost every year. We'll be running this channel for almost three, four years now. And this is what we see towards the end of the year. Young girls traveling to see their boyfriends because they want to, they don't want to be alone during the holidays. It happens. Girls and boys who don't want to go uh, home from school because they want to stay back in campus and spend time with their boyfriends, it happens. You all just got to be careful. Be very careful because the devil is just going to rise and start doing his, 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 his temptation. And native doctors are waiting because this is how they make their money. This is how these people make their money by dealing on human parts, requesting a virgin head, requesting a girl's... They just start requesting and these boys and i don't know it's mostly the young boys are desperate to make money so many young boys are desperate to make money very desperate the desperation doesn't stop because these days we're seeing the troop now jeremiah is a 20 year old boy the serial killer that we talked about from ikorodu was a 21 year old a lot of the killers these days are in their early 20s and some of them may have started the killing as far back as 19. So you would think it's the older ones that we have to worry about. But now look at our young boys. Look at them. The pastor's son that did the same thing was a pastor's son. This goes to show you that there is no safe place anymore. No safe place. The serial killer was at church. The boy that killed the girl at the hotel was a pastor's son. So many people are just going to come up with the front and there is no way to know. The best way is find a way to be aware and just be aware don't be too comfortable don't be too trusting because that will get you nowhere and even if sometimes if it's even the boyfriends you've known for years that would tend to do this is the ones that you've already stayed with because the boys who are tired of their girlfriends are most likely going to start trying to use them for rituals now so we just got to be careful because anyone could be a victim it's just unfortunate for 19 year old damilola olowoyo abigail it's just sad. She just meets this guy at the first station. He approaches her, uses nine words. She falls for it. They exchange numbers, they chat. You know, he invites her over to his house, gives her something to drink, a, a Sprite that was spiked with codeine that makes her drizzle and make her a little weak. And eventually he ended up using her for what he wanted. And in her mind, she probably thought it was going to be a good time, good sex, good love making, and that was how it ended for her. It might be too late to save her now, but I'm just hoping with this video, more people will be aware. It's tiring doing these stories. Sorry to say, it's almost getting old. I'm, I'm bored. It's like, uh, really, another one, another young girl again has fallen for this. Another young boy is out there killing again. When does it end? When would it end? Where does it stop? Is it ever going to end? Are we going to keep seeing things like this happening over and over again? Is there a way we can curb this to stop it from happening? Because ritual killing is insane. If more people out there believe that money ritual is real and it works, we're going to start seeing more people doing it, regardless of the chance that they will be caught. Because I can tell you, it's not everything that makes it to the news. And I don't know what else to say. Let's just hope more people are more cautious more aware and more on the lookout dear young women get your guards up tell your younger sister talk to your younger ones talk to the young girls everybody wants to be pretty everybody thinks that the cream de la cream talk to your brothers talk to your children and maybe everybody in a way 
because we can't stop the bad people from doing these things. There will, a bad person will always be a bad person, but the potential victims are the ones who need to be more aware so that they don't fall victims. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notification button so whenever there is an update, you'll be the first to get notified.